Welcome to the Magic of Emotional Intelligence series. I am your host, Abiola Salami, the Peak Performance Strategist. On this series, we share emotional intelligence insights to enable career professionals, entrepreneurs, and politicians achieve peak performance in their space. On this episode, we shall be discussing how those in the tech space can apply emotional intelligence to achieve peak performance. So, if you're a career professional in tech or an entrepreneur in tech, or a politician interested in tech, the insights from this episode will be of great value to you. But before we get into it, let's go for a quick break. Welcome back. Technology is without question the inevitable future of the world. It is one of the most important drivers of growth in the 21st century. Tech has seen this generation soar to great heights only imagined by those in much earlier eras. The fast-paced speed of innovation and the attendant disruption that we have witnessed in real time gives credence to the power of the digital age where almost anything is possible. Being a chief technology officer for an organization is a very critical role and it places huge responsibility on any such person to not just position the organization in a strategic niche in the tech universe where it exists, but as to steer it toward new worlds of possibilities. Empathy then becomes an indispensable trait for navigating this dynamic path and achieving top-level performance with the available human and material resources. In the workplace, the chief technology officer has to plot how to infuse tech into the playbook of the organization such that things are done faster, cheaper, better, and at best practice. As a C-level executive, CTOs are immersed in the design and strategic planning of the organization, particularly with how tech can enable outcomes and produce top-tier results. The CTO should be able to apply the following empathy-oriented hacks to drive peak performance in their space. Number one, paying attention to every data point. You must develop the ability to sweat the details. This doesn't mean majoring on the minor, but taking cognizance of all the data points. The very first thing every CTO should have is a proper grasp of data. And it takes a great deal of both self-awareness and organizational awareness to do so. The most important numbers of every organization should be laid out and analyzed by the CTOs for proper planning. Remember, as CTOs, what you don't measure, you cannot manage. Taking stock of the available resources, the capacities and assets helps you to know the existing arsenal while projecting the potential for expansion and growth. Although your primary focus as CTO is on tech as a vehicle for driving growth, but a proper humanware and hardware audit helps you to put expectations in perspective. CTOs cannot be data averse whether in qualitative or quantitative forms. Data must be determined, analyzed and deployed when executing ideas. Number two, listen to other perspectives and feedback. As CTO and other practitioners in the tech space, you want to actively use your ears and your eyes in the workplace. When you do, you will hear what has not been said and see the things that are not apparent. Don't assume that you know what other people are saying. You can even ask questions to better grasp what they mean. Someone can have a better idea on how to deploy a digital solution, and if you don't have an open mind, you may miss out on the benefits of such conversations. Watch the body language of your team members when you come up with seemingly unpopular submissions or decisions that are not viable. Find out why people have a different view from yours. Social listening is one of the ways CTOs can gauge the pulse of stakeholders, especially internal stakeholders like the workforce. 
a lot of junior employees and direct reports usually protest with actions or inactions, not necessarily words. This is a proven path to gaining consensus, necessary for driving optimum performance in your team. Number three, adopt appropriate work tools. A CTO that has empathy will seek out the right tools for the workforce that fosters top performance. When the existing capacity has been determined, the natural next step is to set desired output. However, output cannot be magically improved until requisite skills are integrated into the system. So the empathetic CTO, who is well aware of the technical needs of the workforce, will ensure that the right tools are identified and adopted for production. Given the budget constraints, every CTO should have the ability to find cost-effective ways of bridging the technology gap in your team. Sometimes, it is not a case of one-size-fits-all. A particular tech solution may work for some organizations or in different environments, but they may not be appropriate in other organizations. This may be because certain tools work best at certain scale. For example, it will be counterproductive to deploy a tool that is designed for a 1,000-person workforce for a 100-person workforce. Number four, developing tech strategies for the organization. You see, empathy, in a sense, is the ability to interpret another person's feelings, emotions, and in this case, aspirations. Every organization has an overarching vision, a blueprint of what it wants to achieve and where it wants to be in the foreseeable future. The empathetic CTO should then take that achievement orientation and craft a custom digital infrastructure that will contribute to the realization of that corporate vision. The CTO should determine to which extent tech will play a part in product development, payment processing, security of assets, and other areas that tech is needed. You should be able to make the organization compete favorably among your rivals given the available resources. Invariably, CTOs should play an active part in research and development. Number five, investing in the workforce by upskilling them. Empathy is realizing that you cannot expect certain results from your workforce without first empowering them to operate at the desired levels. As referenced earlier, it is not always about tech because the best tools can be available, but the desired result is not even achieved because the best hands are not in charge. The unwritten law of innovation suggests that from the moment something is being invented, it is already from that same moment becoming obsolete. So if the CTO doesn't have empathy and is constantly pushing the needle from a human resources standpoint to ensure that your team members are on the cutting edge of the requisite knowledge, your organization will easily become obsolete to the market you are serving. Number six, allowance for automation. A lot of manual processes should be automated to improve performance. There is nothing to be gained by allowing manual processes to be used by the workforce where machine can handle such. It, is, it rather shows a lack of empathy. One of the reasons most organizations are not operated at peak levels is because a lot of effort is devoted to aspects of the production process that although important, but can be automated. By adapting to new changes, especially new technology, chief technology officers show high levels of empathy. Cars used to be produced one at a time until when car manufacturing companies realized that by creating assembly lines, a lot of the processes can be automated, thereby causing both an increase in both the quality and quantity of cars. Automation consequently gave rise to higher specialization and given a further boost to innovation.
Number seven, create custom clusters to coach teams. Beyond formal trainings, one way CTOs can use empathy to improve performance in an organization is to ensure that those with top skills and great output are paired or put in the same team with those who are lagging behind. Training most times can be very theoretical. The real work is putting them into practice. And by using a coaching and mentoring model, skills can be easily and quickly transferred within an organization and at little or no cost. This cross-pollination of ideas is critical, not just to team performance, but for team bonding. Technology adoption requires a hands-on approach if it is to be successful, literally. On the job interactions over time move the competence level of organizations to new heights. Number eight, talent management. One way tech practitioners can use empathy to drive performance in any organization is the ability to identify the right human resource that is needed to achieve the desired results. The tech practitioner needs to determine when certain tech talents need to be hired, poached, sacked, trained, redeployed, or even collaborated with to achieve specific outcomes. By effectively managing the relationships with the human resources within and without the organization, tech professionals can better drive high performance. Number nine, take prompt action on market intelligence. Utilizing market intelligence speaks to harnessing the influences of the different stakeholders by an organization for its own advantage. An empathetic tech professional should be aware of events in the market that organizations plays in. Using predictive analysis, you should be able to forecast trends and act accordingly. Using social listening, the feedback from the various stakeholders, especially the customers, should be received and integrated into your production process. If there is an update to the existing tech infrastructure being used by your organization, you should stay ahead of the curve in adopting such innovation as soon as it is practicable. Number 10, incentivizing your workforce. Tech leaders should put both inspirational and aspirational leadership in place where financial bonuses and other perks are directly tied to measurable performance. It is established that one of the reasons many staff members don't give their all is because certain organizations operate on mediocrity instead of meritocracy. Nobody needs to be taught down on their deliverables when there is a clear reward for productive behavior. This is an empathetic approach because it speaks to the enlightened self-interest of humans. When people draw a straight line from the collective success to their individual success, they go all in. Thank you for watching this video where we've discussed how to apply emotional intelligence in the tech space. You can equip yourself and your team some more for peak performance by getting my new book, The Magic of Emotional Intelligence. Visit our website to get your copies. You can also follow me at Abiola Champ on all social media platforms. For coaching, training, speaking and collaboration inquiries, please send us an email to hello at abiolachamp.com. Until I see you on the next episode, keep rocking your world like a champion.